First off, just kind of first impressions of seeing your name on the screen, getting another top eight, and, uh, and then seeing the matchup and who all is coming here to your region. Yeah, I told the guys that, you know, whatever the four seed is, that's the regional. So uh, we've been we've been good about just keeping our eyes focused on what's in front of us and, uh, you know, figured there'd be, you know, a really good, just like in, in years past here, there'd be a really competitive field, but we certainly can't overlook uh, the first game, which is High Point. So this is for us, this is the High Point Regional and that's where our energy and focus will be is just uh, on what do we need to do to get in the winner's bracket. Just weren't there any emotions though when you saw Vanderbilt pop up? Not really. I mean, it, it, I think, uh, <clears throat> you know, we, we don't want to get emotional about the storylines. It just needs to be needs to be just about the players. The players don't have those storylines. Only uh, Coach Leggett and myself do. So it uh, doesn't seem like it, it, not the type of guy to ever want the attention on the on the coaches. Um, just make it about the kids. And so <clears throat> for that reason, since it is about the kids, then there's really no emotion. Just, uh, just about execution. So the guys who were on the roster last year is there some benefit now in a positive way the pain they experienced at the regional last year can that be used in a positive way? Oh yeah 100 percent yeah I mean we we label adversity as a good thing and um, you know none more than than uh, the way last year ended after the way it was going prior to that you know with uh, a wind streak and going a million miles an hour and then just just kind of crash and burn and all at once and you know like a uh, less than a 24-hour period so um, they, the, the taste of that and, and the feeling of that has certainly fueled the returner, the returners on this team and um, it's really why it's 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 been a, a chip on their shoulder we noticed it in the fall and it was not just in how they approached baseball but how they approached everything and um, they were just they were just elite in a lot of areas, whether it was academics and shattering two GPA records the, the fall semester, spring semester, or uh, the, their approach to training and games and everything. So uh, I think that all stems from, you know, just knowing that uh, the opportunity to get hot at the right time is earned. It's not given and uh, you got to earn it by doing all the little things the entire time all along the way. And this group has. I don't want to dwell on Vandy and Coach Corbin. I know High Point is the focus for you right now, but uh, Jimmy Overtop was a freshman on that Michigan team. Was he not in the national championship? No, he was a freshman in 2020. Okay. But so he, he his first game of his career was against Vanderbilt uh, <laughs> at, uh, out in Scottsdale at uh, the MLB Ford tournament. Um, but no, no he, he was not on the 2019 team. Do you think he's excited about getting another shot at Vanderbilt, you know, even though he wasn't on that team. Obviously, a lot of his teammates had some bitter feelings about Vanderbilt. Probably not. I don't think he thinks that way. I think he's he's a captain because he keeps the guys centered on what's in front of him. So I don't I don't think he'll think about Vandy until it's time to play Vandy. Um, honestly, um, he may say something different. Um, but I, knowing him, I think he'll be pretty locked in on what we need to do to get in the winner's bracket. Uh, and that's playing well against High Point. Do you know if you'll take the earlier or the later game Friday? That's what Hennessy and I were just uh, talking about it. So we put in for the early game, but I don't think we have a choice. I think TV dictates that. So I guess we'll find out. Um, but we did we did put in to have the early game. And then you mentioned keeping Aiden on that Saturday schedule. So do you know who would go Friday? Have you thought that far ahead? We have, but we're not ready to announce it yet. <laughs> um, how are you playing as a team? I mean, you're 41 and 14, really good record. But at this point, because again, you want to be playing your best at this time. Of yeah, day. guys are confident. Uh, guys, guys are really confident. We, you know, obviously capitalize on the momentum we got from the walk-off win uh, last game. And uh, yeah, but overall, the guys, guys are guys are great. They're low maintenance group. They're a lot of fun to be around, and um, yeah, they're excited about the next challenge. I know you guys aren't you know, emotional about the matchup, the possible matchup, but you got to understand the fans' reaction to all the storylines with Coach Leggett and Tim and you and Omaha, you guys have all experienced that. You can understand how they all be, probably be excited, right, about it. We just need the fans to show up and be loud. Let's just focus on that. They want to focus on something. Even for the first game last year, obviously the Tennessee game had unbelievable electricity in the ballpark, but even the first game had electricity. I mean, that 
you think that, that jacks these guys up and is it hard to kind of keep their feet on the ground so to speak because of the atmosphere no the when the crowd is loud and they stand up and clap with two outs and two strikes and they actually have synchronized chants and they cheer and they get into it and they're actually an active participant in the game instead of a spectator our guys absolutely feed off that and that's what we need the crowd to do we need dks to be filled with six or seven thousand participants acting as if they're the tenth man on the field not just showing up to watch a game and if we can do that wow i can't wait to hear this place rocking Coach, your bullpen has obviously has issues this season, and, and it's been kind of been closer by committee, which is you know usually not the case. But um, has Austin Gordon kind of grown into that role a little bit? I, see, everyone says that, but I don't. I think our bullpen's good, um, and yeah, Gordo's been awesome uh, since he made the move to the pen. His numbers, I think, um, if you just look at his bullpen numbers, he's really good. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I like our bullpen, I like our options, and we've got some really good ones out there. So we'll, we'll try to, you know, this time of year, you know, you kind of have a pretty good sample size and a feel of who can do what, and you know, and then you'll need some outlier performances. You know, get, seeing what Jacob McGovern did and, you know, Drew Titsworth, like those guys aren't freshmen anymore. So they're added bullpen pieces to the Lucas Malstats and the Reed Garrises of the world. and. You know, some other guys who have starter experience like Barlow and Gordon, you know, doing what they're capable of doing back there. Uh, yeah, I, I actually really like our bullpen. I think our, our pitching and specifically our bullpen is really going to rise to the occasion. I guess in terms of, uh, again, everything from last year helped build to this, but just having been in the environment once in postseason, do you think that's something that they've kind of that experience will help them a second time through having been in a regional and been here? Yeah, I think experience is very valuable. Um, that's why college baseball is old in the post-COVID world. Not only is you know they're older players, people with with grad years and, and a shorter draft and all the things, but experience plays. It always plays. And going through the regional at home last year and the returners that experience that and kind of know what to expect, uh, it can certainly be an advantage. Uh, but we still got to go out and execute. We still got to go play well. But. This team will. This this group is ready. Is Will Taylor taking the cast off yet? Uh, no, not yet. But he takes it off this week, if I'm not mistaken. Does that mean immediate? I mean, that means then more rehab or once and the cast jumps comes in off? and swings and ready to <laughs> jacks. Yeah, I have no idea. Uh, I doubt he's going to just jump in there and start yeah. hitting again. There'll probably be a build up time, but yeah. either way, it's one step closer to him returning to action. Coach, the ACC is obviously well represented in this tournament and, you know, right up there with the SEC this season. How well do you think going through the course of the ACC play has, has prepared you guys? Yeah, the ACC is legit. I mean, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a gauntlet of just explosive players, power arms, good teams, great coaches, and just, you know, it just could, it'll, it'll, it'll make you battle tested for sure because there's – there's no teams in the ACC that are gimmies. There's n everybody can beat anybody, and uh, you have to play well. You have to earn every single victory. It's really tough, and um, you just look at the, the the eight national seeds. They all come from the ACC and the SEC, uh, and this whole field is you know is heavy with those two conferences. So, just goes to show you the caliber of baseball in this region, this part of the country, and it's just and you know. And player development's better. Players are older. Everybody's good. Everyone's recruiting. Everyone's got great players. Um, but the commitment um, to to resources in these in these programs uh, are just accelerating the development of a lot of these players. So every weekend, it's it's uh, it's prepared us for an opportunity like this. What are you some of the mental teachings that you and the coaching staff give to the players as far as allowing them to believe and come back from so many deficits all year? I don't know if we have enough time to go over it, but it's just, uh, you, as a coach, you try to create an environment instead of talking about culture. Culture happens over a long period of time. The daily environment is what you try to create and shape. And inside of that environment is a, is a training environment, is a classroom environment, and then you challenge them to push their limits so they there are no artificial limitations that you know get them to you know 
believe that they can do things beyond what they thought were possible. And you do this in the off season, you do it in the preseason. It can be a physical thing or a mental thing or a combination of the two. But um, you know, you do as everything you can to train them to get ready to to just achieve something beyond what they thought was possible, but then that doesn't guarantee that it's going to happen. You actually have to go do it when you face a deficit, and our guys have just done that. So the believability stems from our training, but it really is emphasized by their ability to have come back multiple times this year. One of the storylines, of course, everybody, not since 2010, we're going to hear all about it. A lot of these players were three, four years old back during some of these games. Do you tell them that? Like, you're not dragging 2011 out on the mound with you. You're not dragging 2013 into the batter's box. I've only been here two years. That yeah, It's all about what happens Friday and Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, everyone wants to talk about that. And the people who, the people who bring that up over and over and over and over and over again, those are called Gamecocks. You know, they, those, <laughs> aren't, those aren't Clemson fans. Those, that's South Carolina's fan base that, that love to troll. Um, so whatever, I mean, you know, they've got bragging rights because of what they ac accomplished uh, a decade ago, and that's fine. It's um, Coach Corman. Yes, Coach Corman. It's actually my boss. <laughs> um, and that's fine, and we have to go out and do it. But, you know, if you're going to start looking in history books, then go back to the mid-'90s and the early-2000s and the Coach Leggett heyday. Go back to Coach Will Humstead. This, this is a blue-blood program with plenty of rich history and tradition, and you know, if, if Clemson baseball truly is back, then we've got to go out and earn it on the field. And we're going to do that not by overlooking high point, but by getting in the winner's bracket and then try to stay in the winner's bracket uh, in game two. But it all starts with getting in the winner's bracket on game one. And what has happened historically doesn't have anything to do with what's going to happen on Friday. We're going to go out and play well. We haven't talked about Coastal at all, but obviously a lot of familiarity there. We didn't play him this year. We had him on the schedule twice, but played him last year. And obviously, uh, you know, really admire and respect Coach Gilmore and, and the career that he's had and the program he's built at Coastal. And, you know, they'll be uh, as dangerous as anybody in this field of 64 and uh, playing with a, a lot of passion with players, you know, wanting to make sure that, that he, he uh, ends his career the right way. And so, you know, this is this, there's a lot of storylines in this tournament, as we saw with the matchups and the pairings and all the things, but a team that's going to win is a team that plays the best, and that's the bottom line, and we just got to keep our target on that. So it's going to be a mindset that allows us to play well. A lot of, a lot of your players are wearing the olive drab shirts today on Memorial Day. You've got the hat. Um, Aiden was telling us that, that you make sure that they know, you know right away as a freshman how important the military tradition is here. Oh, yeah. I mean, Patriotism is one of the core values of Clemson University. It's one of the many things I love about this school. Uh, the flag is very important to me personally, just being the grandson of a World War II vet and the son of a Vietnam vet. So, you know, how we pray, so the way we stand for the national anthem is something that we practice um, multiple times in this program. And that's the one guarantee, you know, you, everyone will see. You may not be able to guarantee the outcome of the game, but I guarantee you're going to see a team that stands for the national anthem a certain way, and that's you know two, two minutes, three minutes, whatever it is, where we can, uh, you know, really show our gratitude and appreciation for the men and women that protect and serve this country, and ultimately have made, uh, the, or have made the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, but it's just it's an opportunity for us to. You know, to really respect uh, the fact that we get to play baseball in a free country, and uh, so it is. It's a huge deal for us, and uh, every day is Memorial Day, not just today. Thank you, Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys. Good luck.